Yo, what's up guys and welcome to my first tutorial. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a Moomaton drop and this will be the final result. So yeah, I hope you will like this uh, tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with others if you think this is helpful. So let's get started. So first I'm gonna start with the drums. The drums are one of the most important parts of your track and uh, they are really upfront in your mix down. It's important because drums will fill up a huge part of your frequency spectrum. So first I will play the drums in total so you can get the idea of how it should sound like. And after that I will separate the layers and show you how I did the arrangement and the mix down. So now I'm gonna show you how I did the drums, how I did the arrangement and uh, how I did the mix down for the drums. So as you can see, uh, in the build up I use a percussion and it sounds like this. It's just a basic percussion and I've EQ'd it like this. So I just took out all the lows. Then when the drop kicks in, I use this snare first. It's actually a bit of a combination between a snare and a clap, and I used all the all the only the highs, so I cut it all the lows, just uh, as I did before. So this is the third snare. It's a bit more punchy and and more more bouncy. As you can see, also in EQ, just took out all the lows because they don't need it. Then I have the fourth snare and sounds like this. It has a lot of attack and a lot of punch to it, so it really makes your sound hard. So also, as you can see, just cut it the lows and uh, just did a hot pass. Then uh, a secret to getting really punchy drums is to add some hi-hats. I chose to add two hi-hats, but they are both the same. So as you can see, this is six. And um, like in the seven, I did the same thing, but I bent them one to the right and I bent one to the left. So you get a bit of stereo imaging in it. So then we're going to another perk. It's not a really beautiful sound, but it really fits in a mix. So as you can see, I took out some of the highest frequencies because they really are annoying. So just another one as is because you can see that there are no uh, low frequencies left behind. Then the kick. The kick is one of the most important aspects in building your track. So this is our signature kick and it sounds like this. As you can see, it's really punchy and you can do this in a mix down by just pushing it all the way up. And then if you go to the master, you should put a soft clipper on it so your sound will not collapse. And that way you can get a really uh, loud sound. Then only thing left is the 808. It sounds like this. So this is what the MIDI looks like. I use a slide note uh, at the bottom of this one because it makes it more, more creative and more, more bouncy. So uh, I didn't do as much in the mixer channel, just put a uh, distortion on it or so, sorry, uh, compression. And um, I didn't even use an EQ because uh, the 808 really fills a lot in the spectrum. So I know it's against the rules, but just it's just the way I do it. And for me, it works fine. So in the end, you'll get this as a result. So yeah, now we're gonna move on to the leads. So now I'm gonna show you how we did the leads uh, for this track. The first one is really our signature sound, which was made in Serum. It's our trumpet sound, which we use uh, a lot in other tracks. I might give this one away uh, in the near future when we are releasing sample packs, so don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll show you what it sounds like. So in the mix down, I just cut it out the lows and boosted some, some highs, some mids, 
just to get the sound a little bit more crispy. And I layered this with this sound from Silent. It's uh, sounding like a duck, but it really fills in the whole track. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this one sounds like this. And also I just added an EQ, took out some of the mids and boosted some more highs because I wanted to get it more crunchy. So now I'm going to show you uh, what I did in the lead bus. So I sent it these two to a bus group. And first of all, I just wanted to cut out the lows because I really wanted to be sure that the lows were gone. And uh, this one is actually something I downloaded from Fruity Masters, I believe. It's a hardstyle um, style producer. So as you can see, it's just an automation of the delay and reverb. So when your sound is playing, there's no reverb. And when the sound has no signal, the reverb and the delay will come up. So it will give a really bouncy effect. And next to that, I just did uh, an automation for the EQ. So it really builds up nicely in the, in the buildup. And let me just see. And also, also just added a kickstart. There is a way to, um, it would be helpful to have another EQ like this, because then you will, because the reverb room will make sure that uh, there are a lot of lows because they really expand your spectrum. So this is a way to secure that they are not really getting muddy in the lows. So this is how it sounds like. <laughs> So moving on, we're now going to the effects, which is a really important part of this track. Having good effects is really important for making a good track. Because if you add some pretty dope effects, you could get a really energetic results and really could make your track come alive. So I'll show you what I did for the effects on this one. The first one is a simple crash. Sounds like this. And I just uh, got all out of the low frequencies and just a bit of the highs which were a bit harsh. Next one is just a sweep up. But it has a little pan in it, so as you can see right here. And uh, it really creates a lot of tension. And uh, this is just the same crash as the first one. So here we added an impact. Like solo, it really sounds crazy, but in the mix it really fits together. And uh, we just didn't do anything on EQ. So this one is really important. It's just a basic horn, but it really adds so much to your track. And we EQ'd it like this. Because there were a lot of, you know, harsh frequencies, which we don't want in the track. Because it could cause a bit of problems. So we just EQ'd them out. And... Um, this one is maybe the most important effect of all, because I will show you the difference with and without. So if you use it, it just sounds like this, just a basic alarm. Like I think we all heard that one before. So we just uh, cut it out the low end and we did a side chain to it so it wouldn't interfere with the kick or with the bass. And uh, yeah, just sounds like that. And I'm gonna show you without first. And now I'm gonna show you what it does to the track if you put it on. Like it's very, very little, but it really adds so much. It's just a few little things you can do to really get the most out of your tracks. You want to do this because uh, if you have certain background effects, like an alarm or something, your listener, like the audience, will be interested in or be still still be interested in listening to your music. That's why you want to put an alarm or anything like it uh, in a drop. So down below, we just add a, a bit of effects, like some fogs like this. <laughs> You know, just little things to really, really complete the, the track. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you really liked it and learned a lot. Um, let me know in the comments down below what kind of video you want to see next time. Um, if you want to see more of this, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And uh, I hope to see you next time.